few weeks ago, I did a video comparing the base model 2020 M1 MacBook Pro to the base model Razer Blade 14. And there were a few differences between the two and each had their own unique pros and cons. But now that the new M1 Pro MacBook has just been released, it's time to do a new comparison between these two machines. And in this video, we're going to be comparing the physical dimensions, screen quality, port selections, CPU and GPU performance, thermal performance, fan noise, and also the gaming ability, since both of them now have high refresh screens. And I think you'll be very surprised by the results. Full disclosure, both of these machines were purchased with our own money. So this comparison video is unbiased and is not sponsored in any way. Now, quick note about the price. The RTX 3060 Razorblade 14 is $1799 US dollars versus the base model 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook at $1999 US dollars. So the blade is $200 cheaper, and don't forget it also has double the SSD capacity with a one terabyte SSD versus the 512 gigabyte SSD on the base model 14 inch MacBook. So starting with the external design, let's compare these two together and see how they stack up. I will also put up the dimensions of each device up on the screen now, so you can see any kind of differences. You can see that the Razer is just the slightest bit bigger, maybe half a centimeter on the side there. And then lifting it up to see the thickness, you can see that they're both almost exactly the same in terms of thickness. And as you can see from the other side, both very, very similar. Although I will say that the MacBook is just slightly slimmer, especially due to the large rubber feet on the base of the Razer 14 to obviously lift it up from the table to get airflow they stick out another additional couple of millimeters. Now in terms of weight, when you're actually holding it in your hand, you really can't tell the difference. The razor blade is about half a pound heavier than the MacBook 14. But again, you're probably not gonna really notice it that much. Now, one thing to note about the external design of the razor is this black finish. As you can see, when I hold it up to the light, you can see some smudges and fingerprints there. This is about 10 minutes after I've cleaned it. So you can see that it's a fingerprint magnet and it's definitely not gonna hold up as well as the exterior on the MacBook. And this is the space gray version, by the way. Moving on to ports, we have the proprietary AC charger on the razor. USB-A, USB-C, and that particular USB-C port can only charge up to 20 watts. So it's not gonna give you the full charging performance. You will need to use the dedicated charger with the Razer, and it's also not Thunderbolt. You've also got a headphone jack, and then moving on to the Mac, you have a MagSafe charger, two USB-C Thunderbolt ports, and the headphone jack. Now, cool thing about the MagSafe and the USB-C Thunderbolt port, you can charge from either one. Moving on, both have HDMI ports, but the Razer's is HDMI 2.1, while the MacBook is 2.0. You'll also get an additional USB-C Thunderbolt 4 port on the Mac, and you can also charge from this one as well. And that is another massive pro of the MacBook. You can get full charging speeds no matter what side your charger is plugged into, but you can't on the Razer. And then finishing off with the Razer, you get the Kensington lock, another USB-A, and another USB-C. Okay, so moving on to the internals. So as you can see here, the intake fan on the Razer Blade 14 is on the bottom and it exhausts hot air from the back. Likewise, on the 14 inch MacBook, intake fan on the sides, exhausting out the back. If we take off the case on the Razer Blade 14 and also the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook, you can see we have some differences between the two. Now the fans, on the Razer Blade 14 are bigger than the MacBook. You can also see this massive vapor chamber in the middle. So this is where the CPU and the GPU is. Obviously cold air is sucked in. This acts as a massive heat sink. And when you're blowing cold air through the fins here, that's gonna cool down the whole area. Moving on to the MacBook, you see we have the M1 Pro chip right here. It's connected to these two heat exhaust fins uh, with a fairly beefy heat pipe. So cold air is obviously sucked in through these vents. It runs over the battery and also the components on the motherboard. And then it's gonna obviously get sucked into these fans and it's gonna blow through these heat pipes, which is gonna cool down the chip. And in terms of battery, you can see we have individual battery modules on the 14 inch MacBook versus just one large, huge battery on the Razer Blade 14. And one really big thing to consider guys, as you can see on the Razer Blade 14, the SSD is removable 
on the MacBook, obviously it is not, it is soldered on. And that is a bad thing because the SSD is a consumable component. And that means essentially one day, not anytime soon, but one day it will fail. And that basically means your whole MacBook will be useless. Contrast with the Razer Blade 14. If anything happens to this, pop off the back cover, unscrew that one screw, pop in a new M.2 SSD drive, and you're good to go. Moving on to keyboard and trackpad, I honestly found the typing experience on both devices to be nice. Uh, the Razer Blade 14 has quite nice keys. There's adequate spacing between them. You also get a really cool RGB chroma effect if you're into that kind of thing. But I didn't really find it uncomfortable to type on. It's very, very similar to traditional keyboards you may already be used to on a desktop PC. Whereas the MacBook, again, very enjoyable experience to type. You don't get quite the amount of key travel as you do on the Razer Blade 14, but they're quite tactile. Again, adequate spacing between the keys, physical function keys as well. And it's a massive improvement from the previous butterfly keyboards we saw on older generation MacBooks. Now, moving on to trackpads, I don't have anything bad to say about the trackpad on the Razer Blade 14. A lot of the drawbacks that come with trackpads on Windows devices stem from the Windows operating system itself and how that interfaces with the trackpad. But the trackpad experience on the Blade 14 is okay, but it pales in comparison to the trackpad on the MacBook Pro 14 inch. So you've obviously got force touch. It is a larger trackpad as you can see there physically, and it's just much more enjoyable to use and it seems more responsive in Mac OS compared to using the trackpad on this device on Windows. Now moving on to webcam and microphone. As you can see on the Razer Blade 14, the webcam is not too good at all. It is a 720p webcam and the microphone quality is not that great. Moving over to the MacBook, you can see that 1080p webcam is much better, especially in this low light environment. And the studio microphone seems to pick up my voice a little bit better as well. Moving on to speaker quality. And I know you guys can't really hear this over the microphone, so I'm gonna do my best to play it. And I'm also gonna tell you what I think of it, listening to it in real life. So let's start with the Razer Blade 14. By the way, the volume on both of these are turned to 50%. And now the MacBook 14. And now I'm gonna turn the volume up to 100% and we're gonna see if there's any kind of differences in the loudness of each device. Now remember that the MacBook has a six speaker high fidelity sound system. So again with the Blade 14. Okay, so a couple of things to discuss. At 50% volume, the MacBook was the clear winner. It was much clearer. Uh, the sound on the Razer Blade 14 sounded a little bit muddy, uh, a little bit tinny as well. When we turn the volume up to 100%, the MacBook is definitely louder, uh, but it also loses a lot of the quality. And I found that at that 100% level, they were both about the same as each other in terms of quality. But in terms of loudness, the MacBook did come out slightly ahead. Now, a quick thing to mention as well is they're both running Wi-Fi 6. The Razer Blade 14 has Wi-Fi 6E, but in reality, you're not really gonna notice a massive difference between the two, unless you know how to take advantage of that 6E and you have the gear to do it. Okay, so moving on to chargers, and this is the charger you get with the Razer Blade 14. So as you can see there, it is pretty big. Uh, you know, I've got pretty big hands, guys. I'm six foot four, and it's about the same size as my hand. So it's a very big charger, quite heavy. The cables are braided, and they're very, very thick and good quality. But what that means is when you come to actually wrap this up and try and put it into your bag, that's about as small as you can get it unless you really spend some time sort of wrapping it around and making it a little bit neater. One thing to mention as well is this is a proprietary power plug. So you're not gonna be able to use this with any other devices, just the Razer Blade laptops. 
Moving on to the MacBook charger. Now this is obviously the base model 14 inch, so we don't get the big charger. We just get the standard 62 watt charger and it is the MacBook charger we've all come to know and love with of course a couple of upgrades. So like the old generation charger, you can obviously take the head off and swap that out easily if you're going traveling or moving to a different country. You can also detach this cable and swap it out for a longer one or a replacement cable if this one breaks or becomes frayed. Speaking of the cable itself, it has a big upgrade in that the cable is now braided. It's a much better quality. And obviously this one comes with the MagSafe charger, but if you don't wanna use MagSafe, you can simply unplug this, plug in a USB-C charger, and you're gonna get the exact same charging performance. So I think right there is a really massive difference. So let's have a quick chat about the screen and I'll turn off the neon light just so you can see everything a little bit better. Now in terms of size of the screen, we have a 14 inch screen versus a 14.2 inch screen. Aspect ratio, we have 16.9 versus 16.10. And then for resolution, we have a 1920 by 1080p resolution on the Razer Blade 14 versus a 3024 by 1964 resolution on the 14 inch MacBook. But don't forget that the MacBook has up to 1000 nits of brightness versus just 300 for the Razer Blade 14. Now, as you might be able to see here already, I'll just make sure that they're both turned up to the max brightness. You can see the MacBook Pro 14 is a lot brighter and this is just in a light controlled studio. So imagine what this would be like outside in the sun. Okay, so let's move on to some screen colors and differences in quality between the two panels. So as you can see here, I'm using Sony's Otherworld 4K demo. Both videos are in 4K. Uh, the brightness is maxed out as well. And you can immediately see a difference between the two. The colors seem a lot more vibrant and just a lot more colorful on the 14 inch MacBook. Now in terms of color reproduction, the Razer can do up to 100% sRGB on the 3060 version with a 1080p screen. But if you go up to the 3070 version, you get the full P3 wide color gamut. Now contrast that with the MacBook, you have the Liquid Retina XDR, which is a mini LED full wide color P3 gamut coverage screen. And it's essentially a smaller, slightly less good quality version of Apple's $5,000 Pro Display XDR. Now you may not be able to tell a massive difference between the two through the video, but in real life, I can tell you there is really no comparison. This screen is just so infinitely better, clearer and more vibrant than this screen. There's just no way you can compare them. One thing to mention as well is refresh rate. So you get 144 Hertz on the Blade 14 and you get 120 Hertz via ProMotion on the MacBook Pro 14 inch. So in terms of screen refresh rate, there's only a 20 Hertz difference. Now let's move on to some performance benchmarks. Now, one thing to note, you can see that the Razer is now plugged into the AC adapter. That is because this particular laptop can suck up to 100 watts of power under full load. So yes, guys, that's right. If you want the full performance out of the CPU and the GPU on this machine, it needs to be attached to AC power, whereas the Mac does not. The internal battery on this simply cannot provide enough wattage to power all the components under full load. But more on that in the battery section. Now, before we start, quick FYI, I have set the CPU to boost and the GPU to high in Razer Synapse. So this should be giving us the maximum amount of performance from this machine that's possible. Now, as you can see here, we have the AJA speed test, and this is essentially a cross-platform disk speed test that's gonna allow us to see how quick these SSDs are. As you can see right off the bat, the SSD on the MacBook is much faster than the internal SSD on the Razer. Almost, not quite, but almost twice as fast. Moving on to Geekbench, this is going to test the CPU. So I'm going to run the CPU benchmark first of all. Now, while the CPU test is running, let's talk about the difference in CPUs between the two devices. So on the Razer, we have the Ryzen 9 5900HX CPU with eight cores and 16 threads and up to 4.6 gigahertz boost, which is pretty impressive for a laptop versus the entry-level M1 Pro 14-inch MacBook. We have an eight-core CPU with six high-performance cores and two high-efficiency cores. So as you guys can see there, there is a clear winner. So that is a massive difference between the two. 
And you can obviously hear the fan is still going on this machine. So again, another big difference. Now let's do some more stress testing on the CPU. So I have Cinebench R23 here. I'm going to start the multi-core test. And what I'll also do is I'll come back after this has been running for a few minutes and we'll check out the thermals. Okay, so Cinebench has been running for almost 10 minutes at this point. Let's have a quick look at the internal temperature of these CPUs. So on the Razer Blade 14, we can see the total core temperature is about 93 degrees Celsius. I'm using hardware info on the PC, by the way. On the Mac, I'm using TG Pro. And we can see here that the performance cores are looking a little bit more toasty. So we're sitting around 95 degrees Celsius. Now, as you can see there, the thermal signature is different between the two. If we look at the hottest part on the Razer Blade 14, we're getting about 40, 41 degrees Celsius right in the middle. You will notice that most of the heat is clustered around the middle. That is so you can actually rest your hand here on the WASD keys during gaming and it's gonna be comfortable. Um, so over here, it's really not that hot at all. Barely 32 degrees Celsius. Moving over here to the vents where the heat is exhausted, that's the hottest part, which is about 44 degrees Celsius. Moving over to the Mac, somewhat similar heat signature right in the middle there where that M1 Pro chip is. It's about as hot as the Razer, so about 44 degrees Celsius. On the palm rests, a couple of degrees cooler. And then if we look at the exhausts, couple of degrees cooler as well. So honestly, not a massive difference between the two. I th honestly thought the Windows PC would be running a lot hotter than the MacBook. But a trade-off of that obviously is listen to the fan noise coming from this PC. If you can hear it, that's the PC. The Max fan is on, as you can see here, but it's nowhere near as loud as this fan. Okay, so Cinebench has finished and we did get some interesting results. Now, for the multi-core, you can see the Razer Blade 14 actually started to pull away from the 14 inch M1 Pro. I think that's just because it's able to draw more wattage because it's obviously connected to the AC power. So it's just able to brute force this test a little bit more. And also because you obviously have a little bit more of a robust cooling system on the Razer Blade 14. So with that vapor chamber and obviously the higher fan RPM. And then if we look at the single core, not a massive difference, but again, the big difference there is going to be the multi-core score. Now let's try Lightroom Classic. In this test, I have 50, 24 raw megapixel photos. So we're going to import these first of all. As you can see, they both take almost exactly the same amount of time to import and now Looking through the images, no issues there at all. We have the created cat posing as our model today. Um, so really no difference at all. So moving on to exporting these 50 raw photos. As you can see here, we've just clicked the export button. The timer has been started. Okay, so we have 33 seconds for the MacBook. The Razer Blade 14 is still going. Um, so we're seeing really quite a large difference. And guys, you have to imagine that if you're doing a thousand photos or maybe 50 megapixel photos instead of 24, this difference is going to be compounded. So we're just about to finish over here. As you can hear again, the fan has gone off. It's quite loud and that's it. So this did it in almost half the time that it took the Razer Blade 14. So moving on to some video editing. Now I have some 4K footage here from a Sony A7S Mark III. I'll put the exact stats up on the screen right now. Uh, generally it's a very compressed container. So it's very difficult to color grade, edit, and obviously render. So let's come down onto the timeline settings. Let's just make sure both of these timelines are in 4K. Yes, they are. So we'll cancel that and then let's play this timeline back. You can see they're both playing back at 25 FPS. We're getting green on the FPS indicator, so no issues there at all. If we try to scrub on the Windows PC, you can see we're actually getting quite a few dropped frames. And on the Mac, it's very, very, very smooth. So just to note as well, I'm using the studio version of Resolve on the PC. That means you'll unlock uh, GPU support, so it'll use the GPU to actually help playback and render. Likewise, on the Mac, that is supported by default on the free version of the Mac. And this is also the most up-to-date Apple Silicon version of Resolve. And if we now test out the GPU, 
Let's come over here and let's add a stabilization effect to this first two minute clip on the timeline here. So I'm not gonna change anything. I'm just gonna leave the settings at default and we're going to stabilize and we're gonna start the timer. Okay, and as you can see, the Mac is just about to finish. We're at 99%, so I'm gonna lap that. And the Windows PC is about 10% behind. So again, guys, clear winner here as well. It's going to be the Mac. Windows PC has just finished, there we go. So one minute and 11 seconds versus 59 seconds. Now let's do a render. And remember guys, this is six minutes 4K footage. So we're going to just render using the default YouTube 4K uh, template there. We're going to add to render cube. I have added some minor color corrections and LUTs. We also have that stabilization applied. So let's render both of these. Okay, so the results are in and the MacBook has clearly won. Uh, we have three minutes and 11 seconds versus five minutes and 26 seconds on the Razor Blade 14. And this is full 4K, you know, 422, 10-bit footage from a Sony A7S III. So really difficult footage. Uh, and the MacBook has just torn through it completely. So using a different type of footage, I rendered a red raw timeline. Here are the results. And as you can see, the Razer Blade 14 was able to beat out the MacBook by a fairly significant margin. But again, it was plugged into the wall, the fans were blazing and it was quite loud. Now don't forget that the M1 Pro chip also has dedicated hardware decoders and encoders also for ProRes footage. So if you're using Final Cut Pro, uh, especially with ProRes footage, you're gonna see a massive improvement because that's not relying on the GPU to actually decode it. It's got its own separate little chip that actually does that for you. Let's move on to some gaming tests, which should hopefully give us a better indicator of any kind of performance difference between the two. Now this can be difficult to measure because obviously this is a PC, this is a Mac, and this is also a desktop GPU. Whereas this is a technically a integrated GPU. Now we did the GFX bench results using OpenCL and Metal on the Mac. As you guys can see here, we're getting 143 FPS on the Aztec Ruins high tier score on the Razer Blade 14 versus 93 on the M1 Pro. So you can definitely see the Razer Blade 14 pulling away here, but to get a more accurate view of how they would perform in a real life situation, let's do a Tomb Raider benchmark. So as you guys can see here, I have these settings that are exactly the same. I have a 1920 by 1080p resolution on the screen, 1920 by 1200 on the Mac. So they're both technically 1080p. I do have RTX DLSS turned off on this particular machine. Uh, everything else is exactly the same. You can see the monitor refresh rate is the max that each of these monitors can support. If we move on to graphics, you can see that both of them are exactly the same. So let's now run this benchmark. So about halfway through the benchmark, you can see the Razer Blade 14 is definitely in the lead, getting about 120 to 130 FPS versus about 60 or 70 on the M1 Pro MacBook. And this is to be expected, guys. Uh, with Windows-based games, developers optimize them to play on Windows and they definitely do not optimize them to play on Mac OS because simply less people play games on Mac OS. Developers just aren't incentivized to have their games work or even run on the Mac OS operating system. So that's going to account for a large difference between the two. But as you guys can see, if you want to do any kind of gaming, the Blade is going to completely destroy the MacBook. Okay, and the results are in and very, very clear winner. 93 average FPS on the Blade versus 43 average FPS on the 14 inch base model M1 Pro MacBook. So very, very clear difference. This is easily twice as good as the MacBook. Okay, so let's quickly talk about the battery life and some of the differences between the two. So if we look at the percentage of battery left on the 14 inch MacBook, we have 57%. And this is after a couple of hours of really intense benchmarking, you know, editing, uh, rendering, all that kind of stuff. And again, guys, as you can see, the Razer Blade 14 has been plugged in the entire time because you see a fairly significant drop of about 15 to 20%. Uh, if you're not actually plugged into the AC power. As I said before, uh, the internal battery on this machine is not able to power the CPU and the GPU uh, to 100%. Because obviously you can draw almost 100 watts under full load 
and the internal battery just simply cannot provide that. So unplugged from battery, it's not a pleasant experience. You're only gonna get maybe eight or nine hours just doing casual web browsing. Uh, if you're doing anything more intensive than that, four or five hours max. As you guys have seen with the battery on the 14 inch MacBook, you're getting a really good battery life. You're gonna be seeing around 15 hours of battery life with just normal everyday web browsing and emails. Uh, but as you guys can see, even if you're doing really intensive stuff, don't need to be near a PowerPoint. Uh, the internal battery will supply enough wattage to push the chip to its fullest potential. And to me personally, I just think that's something you really can't compare between the two because there's such a massive difference in favor of the MacBook. There's no doubt that the RTX 3060 Razorblade 14 is a powerful machine, but you are tethered to an AC outlet if you ever want to get the max performance from it. So let's move on to some recommendations or at least my thoughts between the two. You can see that the MacBook actually did outperform the Razer Blade in a lot of the tasks, but at the end of the day, the Razer Blade does have a more powerful CPU and the RTX 3060 is a very powerful and capable GPU. And that's just going to allow this computer to brute force basically anything you throw at it, but at the cost of really, really loud and noisy fans and also having to be attached to a wall outlet to get the full performance from the machine. So is that extra battery life, portability, and just overall quietness a better deal for the MacBook and for you personally? Well, that's up to you. And don't forget the screen, which is a night and day difference. And you've also got the Thunderbolt capability. I can honestly only see two scenarios in which you would choose the blade over the 14 inch M1 Pro MacBook. And that is if, if you're using apps like Blender, which aren't yet fully supported in Mac OS. So if you guys are familiar with Blender, uh, Metal isn't quite yet supported in Mac OS, but obviously on the RTX 3060, works totally fine. And when I was actually rendering Blender projects, this will do it three times faster than the MacBook. But again, guys, double check what apps you're going to be using before you make a purchase decision, because they may very well have been updated and will run natively on the Mac by the time you watch this video. But as of now, there are still a couple of apps here and there that are just gonna run way better on Windows. And lastly, of course, gaming. Massive, massive difference in favor of the Razer Blade 14, which is traditionally designed and marketed towards gamers. Yes, you can do some light gaming on Mac OS, even if you virtualize through parallels and play Steam games like GTA 5, still works, but just nowhere near as good as a proper gaming laptop like the Razer Blade 14. So at the end of the day, I think it really boils down to what exactly you need. And I honestly think the MacBook is gonna be a better choice for probably 90% of people. Anyway, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully I made that purchase process a little bit easier for you. If you have any comments or questions, you know what to do. But apart from that, I will see you in the next one.